Okay, so today in Pittsburgh Artist Studio, we have an artist, Anthony Gray of Grayscale Painting, and uh, we're going to do a little interview with him to see just about his background and what he um, does for art. So hi, Anthony. How are you today? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, well, uh, tell maybe you could tell our viewers just about how uh, your background and how you got involved with art. Well, I was uh, kind of blessed uh, being artistic ever since I, I was born. Uh, you know, uh, in my hometown of Buffalo, um, fascinated with, with uh, art. You know, my parents took me to SeaWorld, and I would presume that probably the start of it, because I do remember very vividly being a child. Um, um, drawing killer whales and Niagara Falls on brown paper bags with a pencil on the, on the kitchen floor while my mom's cooking and everything. So it started you know, since, since birth. That's nice. Uh, yeah, sometimes you just kind of know, I guess, you know, like, yeah. I guess that's how I was too. At a young age, I love to draw and things, but uh, yeah, you just kind of, it's like born in you or whatever, I guess, you know, you, you've never had formal training. You just kind of self-taught. Right. Right. Self -taught. Nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's nice. Yeah. So, well, um, maybe you could tell our viewers the type of art that you do work on and what your uh, subject matters are? Um, when I was much younger, I wanted to become a comic artist. So I was really good with uh, um, inking and penciling, you know, black and white uh, pen art. Mm -hmm. uh, but as the years progressed and everything, um, I started into uh, oil painting. Um, Obviously, along with millions of others, watching Bob Ross. Uh, but this this time, instead of watching Bob, I actually paid attention to Bob, and uh, I was really mesmerized by it. So I um, took that path of, of uh, artistic venue and became an uh, an oil painter. Uh -huh. and, and you know, uh, my subjects are varied. I don't stick to one particular subject. I I paint. A little bit of everything from animal portraits and portraits to the customary um, landscapes, seascapes, and, and, and florals. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know that from just seeing some of the work that you do, do it is, um, you know, like from florals to, like you said, landscapes uh, to Godzilla. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> Oh, yeah, a few of those, yes. Yeah, so you do quite a bit of different. That's kind of like what I am, too. I just, I don't know what it is. You know, you, like you just like something and you want to do it, you know. Yeah. So um, now, uh, do you uh, use any kind of resources in order to get your ideas or, um, or do they just come out of your mind there? Yeah, 99% of the time they just pop right out of my head. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, especially when it comes to particular landscapes and, and things like that. And this is a, a certain scene that somebody wants, and then, yeah, I'll flip to a magazine or something or go on Pinterest and see what they have. Mm -hmm. If it's something uh, specific, if not, more than likely not, it just comes right out of my head. Okay. Yeah, that's that's nice. See, I don't I don't have that gift. I, you know, I mean, I can look at a picture and do something with it, but it's just hard for me to just be creative like that. To, you know, just I tried to do that one time in a class and my teacher didn't like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to be that kind of person. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't work that way. So, um, how well do you ever get like a creative block and how do you overcome that? If you do, yes, I do. Um, it happens pretty frequently with me because of um, how much I, I paint. Um, when I get overwhelmed like that, then I will just go on to other avenues. I'll put the brush down, and um, I'm a I'm a pretty good book reader, so I'll I'll get a book. I'll do anything other than paint. Um, the whole my edges. I'll just give the, a break for a while, mm -hmm. uh, and then when my mind and body's right for me to get back into painting, then I'll step back into it. I never 
uh, rush it um, or force it uh, that will make things a lot worse. Just gradually let it happen. Right. For some people, it, it may take a few days. Some people, it might take a few weeks. It all mm -hmm. depends on the individual. But once you get the, uh, the gumption, the pain again, um, it'll happen. It'll come. It, do, it, do it at the reasonable time for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. I find that myself. Yeah. You know, like you just get like burned out from it or something. You know, you just don't want to do another thing. And then then all of a sudden you see somebody's working at something that you really like and you think, oh, yeah, maybe I could do this too. You know, <laughs> so, well, I know that I didn't send you this question, but I see that you have uh, m musical equipment in, in the background there. So do you uh, um, dabble in music also? Yeah, um, I've been playing the keyboard. I've been playing the keyboards for, oh, I don't know, maybe 46 years or so. Oh, wow. um, and I, I play, uh, well, in the beginning when I when I learned, I, I was sight reading and I played the classic classical music and stuff. But as I got older, um, I played for um, my local church and other churches around the area uh, for many years. So um, I play anything from, uh, Classical pieces, the jazz, the, to just about anything. Nice. Know. Yeah, I, you know, I find a lot of artists have a double, you know, that they are into music. Um, yeah. I yeah. like music, but I can't play it. You know, I wished I could, but um, <clears throat> it would be so nice. But it seems so hard for me. You know, I've tried different things. I tried, you know, like the keyboard and, um, you know, like a piano, but I can't get my left hand to do. <laughs> I must be, I don't know if that's my brain right or left. I don't know, but I can't seem to do this together. You know, it's a little harder for me, but that's kind of interesting. Well, if, do you have anything else that you would like to share with us uh, as far as uh, your artwork? Um, other than I'm planning right now at the time of this recording this interview, I'm planning on doing a, uh, I don't know if you really would call it a DVD because you can pretty much put it in any format now, but for all intents and purposes, doing a DVD or two of painting techniques of what I've learned and what I've known over the years and uh, be very professionally done, very nice. And it will go from A to Z of techniques to you to use for the beginning painter or the intermediate uh, painter um mm -hmm. and i'll take my time and go through everything um so it'll be a, a, probably be a, a series of them you know be available mm -hmm. to them to purchase and everything either in dvd form or mp4 or whatever but yeah but i'll be That's working good. on them. yeah good yeah. yeah that sounds great i mean i'm i know that like your one technique with the um Oh, uh, glycerin. Is that what you, that yeah. glycerin? Uh, yeah. That was kind of interesting for me um, because I, I actually studied um, with William Alexander. I didn't study with him because he's, he's passed away, but it's similar to what Bob Ross taught. And um, actually, Bob Ross was uh, a student of William, William Alexander, and then he kind of went off on his own and, and took some of the ideas for William Alexander, showed him. But, uh, you know, and it, I, I'd done some oil painting with that technique, similar, but I've never tried it with the acrylic. And I think that's really interesting how that works out. Yeah, basically, uh, because vegetable glycerin is water soluble. And mm -hmm. if you handle it much like uh, liquid clear, mm -hmm. uh, that I can really kind of describe it to with liquid clear being very molasses like, and you only get a little bit of that stuff. Um, glycerin is the same way, but it's just water soluble, so it's perfect for acrylic paint, heavy body uh, acrylic paint. A very little bit goes a long way. And essentially, it's the, it's the same thing, it's just doing the oil painting technique but just applying it to acrylic paint and it just uh slows down the drying time of the acrylic paint and it's also an excellent blender yeah i i noticed how it it really works well because i like acrylic especially if our viewers are watching dries out pretty quick you know like you have a hard time you 
uh, moving it around. So you have to work kind of fast. So it, anything to slow that down, that, that's uh, an interesting point. So, well, I mean, I, <laughs> I think we went through all the questions. Uh, I guess the only thing I didn't ask you is where you get some of your inspiration, uh, but you said you go through magazines. Uh, is there any particular artist that you really like following or? Um, believe it or not, uh, no. Um, you are just on your own. <laughs> pretty, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, actually, in the beginning, I was really, really um, crafted by Bob and, uh, and Bill. Alexander. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I really, there's nobody really that I am too influenced by. Um, it's been so long that I pretty much um, probably more or less developed my own style. Mm -hmm. um, but since those beginning years, I, I've studied uh, a lot of um, info um, from Bob. So he was the he was the first one. Um, I was very well aware of, of, of Mr. Alexander, but I think he was just a little too aggressive for me. I was just a young fella. Uh, he, yeah. scared, he, he scared me. Yeah, he would. Uh, yeah, as he. I, as, as I got older, I, mean, I really got to appreciate the uh, brilliance of, of Mr. Alexander. Well, yeah, I mean, he he was interesting, you know, to come up with that idea of yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, how, the uh well magic white is what bob ross calls it but uh yeah. he hasn't done now uh it's changed uh they got like a new format they right after i got my certification <laughs> they changed the format so i, I feel bad <laughs> because poor bill alexander you know like that was his whole life and um yeah. you know to change that uh, it just kind of like was devastating to me but uh you know, it's still a good technique. I mean, it, it really teaches you all the, you know, certain ways to do that with the work, with the brush, and you know oh, that. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think more people do. And I try to, you know, incorporate some of that, but it, it, it's it's not as easy with just plain old acrylic. You know, you need that little bit of flow, and I have to try that glycerin thing someday. <laughs> yeah, See how that works. Very in-depth um, explanation on it. I get I get a whole lot of questions about it. Yeah, and I do explain it on, on my lives and everything. But I think with this um, video that I'm going to do, I will really break it down and, and, and explain how to use it and, and and how to apply it and what it can and cannot do. Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's really um, nice medium to use with acrylic paint. Uh, yeah. Pretty standard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I do appreciate you th that you took the time, and I I'm sorry oh, um, that I interrupted your <laughs> morning. No. There. It's all yeah. right. It's yeah. okay. So, well, this will uh, be on. Um, uh, my phone is dinging like crazy. It never fails. Uh, <laughs> it'll be on YouTube at five o'clock on Saturday. It'll premiere. Okay. So, if you can be there, I can let you know where where to come, you know, where the link is and everything. <clears throat> and then I'll have all your links underneath the information section so people can get in touch with you and, you know, maybe talk to you about your, your methods sure. of painting. No problem. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you were able to make it and uh, you have a good rest of your day. You too. All right. Thank you, Anthony. All right. Bye.